Well, collections come in all shapes and sizes, and a southern Minnesota man has one that is beyond impressive. Steve Miner from Winnebago is a proud owner of one of the largest hams and beer collections in the entire country. That memorabilia has never been more popular. But in this week's Finding Minnesota, John Lortzen shows why that isn't all Steve's known for. So this isn't a collection so much as it is a museum. I call it a collection, but... <laughs> this is not a collection, this is a museum. <laughs> okay, okay. Steve Miner okay. might live in the land of 10,000 lakes. They started in 1865 in St. Paul. Hams. Mmm. But it's the land of sky blue waters that caught his eye. That's the Ham's beer slogan, and every inch of his home is chock full of ice cold collectibles. This is uh, one of the first Ham's cans, actually, uh, this is 1935, but since this was such a new thing, they even had the instructions on the side on how to open them. You didn't I, drink all of them? I did not, no. Okay, good, that's good enough. Steve began collecting in the 1970s and at one point had more than 4,000 beer cans. This is kind of the the holy grail of for hams collectors. Then he started buying signs and cineramas before they were popular, inspired by those iconic hams bear commercials. These days, as a retired mechanic and a hams historian, he fixes broken memorabilia for people at his shop in Winnebago, pieces of nostalgia that once graced the walls of a local bar or VFW. It takes like five minutes for the entire scene to go by, and it's just, it's just classic. It's just classic. I mean, it just screams Minnesota. But Steve's interests go well beyond beer signs. Hey, what's the feeling like when you get it running again, the music's oh, coming really, out of it? There's nothing like it. There aren't many people left in the entire country who can bring a 1950s jukebox back to life. But Steve is one of them. There, nothing looks worse than a jukebox sitting there without bites on. Seberg was kind of the king of the, the, of the 50s. They came out with the first machine in 1950 that played 45s. As a jukebox doctor, Steve is doing his part to keep rock and roll alive. So he says as long as he can still find the parts, he can still make the fix. Not a bad way for a former mechanic to spend retirement. You got old beer cans, old jukeboxes, you're just missing a few pinball machines. I got those too. I'm seeing more and more young people that, that are collecting uh, this kind of stuff because either their dad or their grandpa did it. In Winnebago, John Lordson, WCCO 4 News. Steve's collectible and jukebox repair business is called Ham It Up. For more information on all the cool things that he has fixed, just visit WCCO.com links.